Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be listening to the NI Golf Podcast. Episode 52. Episode 52. Unbelievable. And uh, today you were up at Galgorm ahead of... One of the premier Challenge Tour events of the year, the NI Open, hosted by Modest Golf, returns to Galgorm Castle from the 16th to the 19th of August. Register now for your free tickets at niopen.golf. So, it's this week. How was the course looking? What's the crack? What's going on? Why were you there today? I'm there today because there was big news today. Okay. The NI Open next year is gone. Next year? We haven't had this year's yet. Hold on. It's gone. All equality. Really? It is. Me too? Me too. No more Lemonos, girls and boys, co-ed. Mixed foursomes? No, it's not mixed foursomes. All right. It's gone co-ed. Next year's NI Open is now the NI Open men's and ladies event. Really? Seriously. But not playing it. against each other? or No, two separate events. Yep. Full fields, LET, Challenge Tour. Both events will be held concurrently and they'll be played over the courses at Galgorm and Mazarin oh. for qualifying. And then the final couple of days will be at Galgorm. So is that... Men at Mazarin, ladies at Mazarin, and men at Galgorm, or nope, mixed up a bit like the if you saw some of the the European event that was on on ah, about two months ago. No, 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 at Glasgow there last week. Oh, no, I didn't see that. European Championships um, went when all the swimming and gymnastics and all as well. They did a golf event, and it was mixed. So you'd have the boys teeing off first, and then the next group would be a group of girls group of boys, group of girls. So when you say totally mixed, yep. is that Catholics and Protestants? Haven't gone that far yet? No. Not that far yet, okay. So <laughs> so this is going to be next year? Next year already, yep. The wheels are in motion. Wow. So just explain the format then a bit more, mm-hmm. or does one of your interviewees explain th- the format? I, I think we'll, we'll, we'll wait and listen to some of the interviewees, and any queries, Morris, you can ask me. Okay, but what about this year then? How's the course looking for this year? They're ready to go. It obviously kicks off, and uh, well, tomorrow's the, the yeah. pro and This is now Tuesday afternoon, the practice day. 14th. Yeah, practice, practice day. day today. The guys were up there. Most of the guys had already mm-hmm. arrived and were doing their practicing. Yeah, they were out there. It was a bit damp this morning, but the course is looking great. In actual fact, the course, when we played it, if you remember, we played on the sponsor's yeah. day and it was scorching, 30 degrees. place looked a bit burnt out in places. It's looking lush now, it's lovely. The rough's come up as well. So it's going to be a test. Pro-Am day then, obviously Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. Uh, no Nile this week. No Nile, Horan, no. Uh, <laughs> there was a wee press release went out <laughs> last week. And of course... The NI Golf Podcast being on the ball. Retweet. Didn't we bang it out mm-hmm. there and get the, we'll get the word out and then we get a wee word. Oh, sorry, we went too yeah. early. Because because he's on tour now, mm-hmm. it's, he can't actually make the commitment to be able to come over from Los Angeles or wherever he is. Exactly. Uh, so he's not going to be able to play in the Pro-Am no. this year. Unfortunately. So there won't be 17,000 screaming 13-year-old girls there this year. Unless well, they probably will me. turn up. <laughs> see me, maybe. Well, <laughs> Indeed. Uh, so no <laughs> doubt at the Pro-Am, but the Pro-Am uh, is on Wednesday and then the tournament kicks off yeah. properly on yeah, Thursday. It was busy today now. A lot of players out playing nine holes, trying to get a feel for the place again. Uh, Gavin Moynihan bumped into Gavin Moynihan. Obviously spoke to Michael Hoy, spoke to Cormac Sharvin, spoke to Ross Kellett who did well last year, spoke to Ross McGann. Sort of just people get themselves in and settled for the week. Mm-hmm. Now, as we mentioned, Nile's not there, but of course it is a modest golf it event. Indeed. And uh, you had a chat with Mark McDonnell from Modest all about this week's event. We're sitting in the, in the new media centre at Galgorm Castle, looking out onto the course. A bit damp today, but hopefully the weather will get better over the rest of the week. Mark, first off, uh, a few thoughts on the tournament this week. We're back to 72 holes. Yeah, I mean, uh, Shootout Sunday was a, an incredible success last year. Uh, it really drove a lot of um, people through the gates. And um, personally for me i really love seeing non-golfers attend because of this new format it really captured people's imaginations um but yeah now it's time to go back to a traditional uh, tournament um traditional stroke play um at the amazing gal gorma actually went out on the course yesterday and uh, the course is looking fantastic so it's going to be a great week um, i've just finished having a a, a bit of a, a launch event there where you're already looking ahead to next year, which yeah. I suppose is, says everything you need to know about your own involvement here in Galgorm. We're always looking to keep things moving forward. And really exciting news, you're going to try and do a mixed men and ladies event involving hundreds of players. Yeah, exactly. Um, for us, it's important to continually 
you know, change things up, uh, look at new ways to, to grow this incredible uh, event that is the Northern Ireland Open. So, um, yeah, so it's time to bring back a ladies' European tour event to, to Ireland and to Northern Ireland. Uh, they haven't had one for six years. Um, they've only had 29 in their history. Um, so, obviously, we, we announced earlier in the year we signed Leona and Lisa Maguire, and we feel we should have our part and play our part in, in bringing back a, another playing opportunity for the ladies european tour so yeah so it's essentially going to be a ladies european tour event which will run alongside the men's northern ireland open challenge tour event uh, two separate courses for the first two days coming together on the last hole uh, last two days and it's a really now this is a, if we thought the student was a big step up this is a totally different because it's a full field 120 ladies 150 mm. odd men um, as you say we're going to have the cream of of, of, uh, of the young challenge tour talent and hopefully maybe a few visitors from across the water for the ladies tour yeah I think um, we're going to be very ambitious with this um, schedule's key but yeah of course you know for, for us this has changed it from a national event to an event which will go on a global global scale and we want you know uh, players from across the pond in america or the far east to come and obviously play in this you know so uh, we we fully expect that as well um i think it's an event which will grow and um certainly the feedback we've got from the the key sort of stakeholders within northern ireland and ireland who we spoke to are all for it you know and um you know there's a real there's a real need, I think, to highlight um, and, and help female sport. And I think Ireland lacks at the moment enough female sporting icons. You've obviously got Katie Taylor right now, but we really want to shine a spotlight on the next generation of um, Irish superstars in the female sporting world. Um, the date hasn't been actually released yet, but we're hopeful it'll be a summer date, that's for sure. Um, does that does that make a difference? I think Ireland? it may well make a difference, Mark. Yes. <laughs> in terms of um, hosting event over over two courses, it, logistically it's going to be difficult. It's going to be a step up for the people here at Galgorm, but are they up to the task? Oh, of course. Um, you know, modest as a business, uh, we celebrate our third year, um, our third birthday in a couple of months, and you know, from the start, you know, we always said a boutique management company with an event side to the business, but the events we get associated with have to be of absolute first class quality and, I, and i've said it a couple of times before you know we're very fortunate as a as a business we we travel all over the all corners of the earth watching golf and attending golf events this is right up there with any event in the world in terms of organization um, so we are extremely confident the infrastructure is in place um, to really push this event on and um, we have no doubt that the 2019 Northern Ireland Open with both ladies and um, men's um, participants will be up there as, as, as well run as it's always been without a doubt and it's going to have to be because can you imagine you're going to have two of everything needed now Galgo. Two of everything. Yeah, well, if you know what I mean, two scoreboards, two sets of cars to take all the players to and from where they need to go. They reckon it's going to take 6,000 bed nights, Morris, for all these players wow. and staff. Well, you look at it. You've been at Galgorm, You've seen how big an event it's become. Mm -hmm. The volunteers alone, people coming in from everywhere to help out. They've got the courtesy cars. They've got the, the grandstands. They've got the tented villages. So that, that in itself brings money into the, the local area. Well, now it's going into Antrim and Mazarine. And the, because it's going into Mazarine from next year on, that's actually in the Belfast a bit more. So the reach of the whole thing has got a bit bigger. And I think Gary Henry, who is the, the man looking after the tournament event coordinator, he was speaking to me later. Gary, great news about the plans for 2019 and uh, a ladies and men's joint event here at Galgorm. But from a logistics point of view, can you explain sort of what it's going to take here to put this thing on? Because you're going to need two of everything. Um, in most cases, yes. Um, one, of the, one of the benefits of having two separate events but under the one organisational umbrella is... Um, several items will be one of, for example, there'll be one media centre covering both locations. Um, there'll be one central scoring point covering both locations. Um, but the basic things like scoreboards, 
Um, uh, requirements for players, changing facilities, players' lounges. Yes, we'll need two, two of them in each location. Um, but there will be some efficiencies by having two events on the one, one umbrella without doubt. But at the same time, the core basics is still the events going to double in scale. The infrastructure requirements will probably, if not double, um, will certainly increase. Um, and then we also anticipate, obviously, the spectator numbers will increase uh, in line with the event. Um, so generally there is a, a bigger undertaking, without doubt, um, and the team at Mazarine um, will support us in that. Um, uh, with a, a strong uh, membership there who's already shown great willingness to support the event, and we certainly expect plenty of volunteers and people that want to sort of t take up opportunities to get involved in more the organisational side but also then events increasing like this also creates employment um, so we will have people who's employed for a longer period of time in the build up to the event um, and that's one of the great things hosting these events annually in the country it actually does create jobs um, helps sustain jobs um, not just for the week of the event, but sort of pre- and post-event. Mazarine, some people mightn't actually be that aware of Mazarine. Uh, you know, give, give listeners a bit of an idea about the golf course and, and sort of what people can expect. Or I know it's obviously very close to Loch Aaron. Yeah, well, it's, it's obviously, it's really on the edges of Loch Ness. Yeah. Um, Sorry, Loch Aaron, I don't know, I was an Anna <laughs> <laughs> Um So... Mazarine's five two distinct nines. The front nine being a traditional parkland, um, nice tight fairways, small greens, um, fairly, fairly well shaped. You know, there's not many holes, if only that's straight. Um, so that would challenge the, the the players. Really, it's not as long as some tournament courses, but it's strategically it, it is a good test. Then the back nine, which is traditionally a links field to, were. Um, Many years ago, that part of the course was actually on the water in Loch Ness before they lowered the height of Loch Ness. Um, so you've got that real length sort of feel, again with trees, but there's no doubt it's a very sort of distinct feel to it. Um, and that, that in itself will challenge the players. Um, and hopefully we have our summer weather um, that, that we get at this time of year. Um, it just it, it will ask the question of the players. So effectively they're playing two completely different courses. And in, in Mazarin's case, there's actually two separate nines, slightly different fields. So I think it's a good strategic challenge all around for the guys coming across. So two events, two big fields, uh, two sets of bits and bulbs needed to host it. And obviously the big question is more money needed for the prize money. So um, where are we with that, Gary? How, how is the search for sponsors? Has this, has this been attractive to sponsors? Yeah, I mean, one of, one of the um, things we've done before, we've got to the actual planning stage where we are now, is we've spent quite a bit of time um, discussing the project with um, the whole tourism aspect of what how it will enhance tourism, and there's no doubt that will help because we're, we're reaching out to a much wider audience, and as we all know, when it comes to going on holidays, etc., normally... Um, it is very much the female in the house that would normally dictate where we're going with that. So you can see that as the event widens, it, it widens the appeal, both from a tourism point of view. The private sector, there's no doubt that in in these times, um, particularly large corporate companies are very, very um, concerned of what events they, they get involved in and they want to make sure that it's reaching out across the whole community, both male and female. Um, and this is, this is what this event brings. It's a really unique opportunity, certainly in the Gulf, uh, where corporate Ireland can sort of get involved with the event, uh, uh, but it, keeping fine much up to date with where we are in the world of equality. So is this, um, is this a challenge to an event for ladies and men, or is this a challenge to an LET event? Challenge to an LET event. So this is the full ladies tour? Yes. And the challenge tour? Yes. Wow. Yeah, and there'll be a field of, I can't remember, so it's over 120 odd on the LET, and I think over 140 odd on the challenge tour. So a couple of hundred 
pros knocking about. And it's going to be whoever's available and can play, or is there a qualifying at all for the ladies well, and men's? Or uh, It'll be, uh, uh, I d- see, obviously, a wider discussion on the ladies' European tour is that the ladies' European tour has struggled over the last three years, Morris, to get events. It has, yeah. Um, not like the LPGA, which seems to go from strength to strength. The ladies' European tour struggled to get events, struggled sponsors, to get funding, yeah. sponsors have dropped away. So, something like this is going to come in and hopefully um, be a key feature on their schedule. I think there was weeks, six or seven weeks there, Morris, where they didn't have an there event. There was an event, that's right, yeah. And then you have the, Re- the Scottish Open and then the Rico British Open and then that's it again. So all the top like, ladies on the LET are going to be looking for events to they're play? They're going to need to play. So it's not as if they can pick and choose. So so we get a Georgia Hall coming to Galgorm? Very easily. Yeah. Very, very easily. Um, and as you heard from Mark, you'll get Leona here anyway. Um, and Lisa here anyway mm-hmm. and maybe fingers crossed you get Stephanie here mm-hmm. from, from the Symmetra Tour she's, if she's already on the LPGA fingers crossed you get there so it's going to be absolute top level ladies golf in fact it could be in terms of the level of golfer dare I say it <laughs> better than the challenge bell, tour. higher than the challenge tour because there'll be some established players or, and Niall Horan knows people Niall Horan has friends Niall Horan could maybe Ask a few people to stay on because mm-hmm. they're looking over. It's around the time that the British Open's on and the, the, maybe the Scottish or something. So, tell you what, ladies, stay on for another week. Great wee event here. Come Lovely wee there. event. Come on over and support it. That'd be great. Wouldn't it? it is absolutely brilliant. I think it's a powerful idea. I think it's the right time for it mm-hmm. from Gal Gorham's point of view as well. You know, it's been going, the Challenge Tour event's been going, the trade last year, the shootout. They're going back to 72 holes this year, and now that they're, they're going again with something different, and it's not a one off, it's a three year plan. So it's set in stone. Three years, same thing for three, three years. years. That's their idea, Ooh, right? And then they'll have a look at it again. So, fingers crossed, you know, because it, it obviously, let's be honest, it's going to take some teething problems. Mazarin and Galgorm, for people who don't know, aren't beside each other. No, like 20 minute drive, give or take, roads being clear. So, you know, they're going to be, how do you get people around, where people stay? All that have to be sorted out as mm-hmm. well. But you look at how well Gal Gorm's run now, Morris, isn't it? That? And you'll get a lot more coverage, media and TV coverage, because it's at exactly. that level. It's now become, instead of, shall we say, a local regional event, once you bring the LET into it, which is a global tour, mm-hmm. it's now a global event, mm-hmm. which is just does wonders for the whole place. It's really Put really those good. headphones on properly. Sorry. Can I teach you now? Put sorry. your headphones sorry. on. Right, for goodness sake. All right, all right, all right, all right. Farting about. Yeah. So talking about the tournament, the tournament ambassador, Michael Hoy, was about today. And he was getting a wee bit of physio. Yeah, well, we, we haven't even had this year's event. We're talking about next year's. Yeah. But back to this year's, yeah. let's hear what Michael had to say. Michael, it's great to see you back at Gal Gorm in your ambassadorial role. But before we start talking about Gal Gorm, what about your own form this year? It's been... Uh, Quite good. I've had a fourth, a fifth, seventh, ninth, and a couple of top 20s. Just need to push on to get a top three in probably one or two of the big ones coming up. Um, You've been reasonably consistent, as you can see. Have you been able to pinpoint anything? I believe you were saying earlier in the week there that your putting has improved a fair bit over recently. Yeah, uh, putted well. Like Glen Eagles, the greens were perfect last week, and if you started the ball on your line, you could tell if you were starting the ball on your line. If it was you, not it wasn't the greens' fault. So that was a good indication. Got a bit of confidence in my putting, but Shane Mustafa has been very good for keeping my swing on track. He was here yesterday. Um, very good golf coach, and uh, he's helped me a lot. Is the sort of interest, Michael, and the enthusiasm remain as high as ever for golf? Oh yeah, massive, massive passion. Yeah, I just um, enjoy the game, trying to hit the ball solid and swing it better. It's very satisfying, and only golfers know what it's like, like yourself, to to hit it solid. And uh, you know, it, it's there's something about the game that you still you really like. Yeah. Um, the Glen Eagles event was a was a mixed event as well. So can you give me a flavour? I know it it was hard to see, and it was a bit on BBC. The crowds were down, but um, just from a, an event perspective, what did you make of it? It, yeah, the, for, the it was just for, it, very, very different because you're so used to playing for yourself. But the four ball better ball was a really good format, really exciting. Um, if you're out of a hole, you could be more aggressive if the other guy was in the hole. Um, we did seven under on Friday. 
which you had to do, otherwise you were sort of going to get beaten. So it was good, aggressive golf. Um, it was fun, obviously, a bit like what Gal Gorham is targeting for next year. There's girls and guys there, and a good atmosphere for the event, definitely. Well, going on to next year, and obviously, with well, being rude, you've been around a long time. You've seen a number of different formats and, and people trying different things at golf events. What do you make of this NA Open for ladies and men's next year? I think, as we've seen the last couple of years, if you stray too far from four-round stroke play, you can um, you can have an adverse effect. So the good thing about next year's event is you've got four-round stroke play, but you might have a winner um, from the girls' side, and then the next group might be a winner from the guys' side. So there's going to be excitement towards the end, like two, di- two different winners, obviously, maybe in the last few groups. Uh, two different golf courses, and... You know, I said 6,000 hotel bed opportunities as well. So a family uh, event, lots going on um, as well outside of the golf. And, Michael, what about uh, the event this week? Finally, your own form and your take on the golf course. I'm sure you've been out having a wee look at it. Yeah, it's always very good condition. I just hope for the... For the greenkeeper's sake, they've worked so well. The fairways and greens were perfect yesterday. Just hope the weather's reasonable because um, we kind of don't want preferred lies and we want those greens still to be perfect and, and I hope the, the weather's uh, pretty good. Was there a point in that chat with Michael where he compared his ball striking with yours? Yeah, I know. Is he losing it totally? Well, I think I last struck a ball consistently well about four or five years ago. You know that? Do you know he talked about that thing where you hit a ball well and you want to come back to his head's going <laughs> <laughs> what I will say finally on, on not on this year's event but next year's event um, the, the, Michael was talking there about the events that are used sort of the social aspect of mm-hmm. it and, and that was something that Mark was keen to to play on today when he was talking to us you know they see it as an opportunity to really uh, get community involved again but to widen the reach outside of the Galgorm area um, to try and get these the, the two the two sets of players in an environment where they're they're reaching out to the local community and making it more of a of a whole sort of festival of golf is the way Mark described it. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Sounds great. Looking forward to it already. And indeed, this week, of course, tickets are free for the NI Open. It starts properly on Thursday. All you got to do is register uh, on their website, or indeed, you can turn up at the gate and get your tickets at the gate. And let's say it's all free, and the food festival is there. Yeah, music. The, ki- the music's yeah. there. The kids golf. Uh, that's right. Yeah, that's a great yeah. place for the kids. Gol- uh, the golf now people are running their, their junior golf tournament. Yep. So it's all there up at Galgorm. Uh, starts Thursday. Get the best prices on every round of golf with Hot Deals Tea Times exclusively from Golf Now. Available at more than 1,600 golf clubs throughout the UK and Ireland. Hot Deals save you up to 80% on thousands of tea times daily. Find the flame and save every time you play with Hot Deals only from Golf Now. Now, it's been a while since we've been on the, on the podcast because we've, we've been very remiss. We've been away for three weeks. Two and a half. <coughs> Didn't even have the excuse of going to Carnoustie because that was the previous one we did. <laughs> so it's been since the Open that uh, we've been on, on, on the air, so to speak. Exactly. Uh, there's been lots has been happening since we've been away. Uh, first off, probably Richard McAvoy. Just shows you that the more longer you try, eventually your day will come. How many events did you say? Seven thousand four hundred and eighty, at least, or maybe that was round. Closer to a couple of hundred, <laughs> but it, looked, felt, it probably felt like that. Then. Felt like it for him. But after all of these starts, fantastic. He had his him. first win at the Porsche Open. Yeah. Uh, Ken, right. a nice fella too in the final round. Well, you see, this is the point. Now, I hope you know. I hope it didn't take any shine off it for for Richard. But our shanker of the week goes to Bryson DeChambeau, or as I saw him called on one Twitter, uh, Bryson DeChambeau, which is a very American thing. Oh, yes, yes. So Bryson DeChambeau, I don't know if you saw the footage or not, Mm -hmm. but basically Richard McAvoy wins his first uh, tournament. In 7,000 attempts. Whatever it is, yes. And uh, walking off the 18th year man comes over and didn't even look at him, did literally a half a second handshake. Like it was like... Away. I think he barely touched him. I barely t- but even I saw two angles of this, and on the other angle, of it didn't actually look like he even shook his hand. Mm-hmm. It looked like he just walked past the front of him, yeah. right? But then from the other angle, it looks like he shakes his hand. You can't even really see. However, it was the total ignoramusnessness of it. He couldn't even, you know, he he's bound to have known going into that final round who he was up against, what his background, what his history in terms. He's bound to have known that then when he did win, that was his first 
a victory and he couldn't even be magnanimous in defeat and shake the man's hand properly and say, well done after all these years. You know what I mean? It's just... It, it came across very bad. Did you see he actually ended up having to go on TV in America and explain himself? Aye, but he, he, even his tweet of yeah. apology, yeah. which came, I don't know, a few hours later, whatever it was, yeah. even that was like, you yeah. know, that was... Instead of just being totally, listen, I made a mistake there. I should, uh-huh. I should have congratulated It again. was so kind of gratuitously nothing. Do you know what I mean? It was just like... It was just bad form, Mars. Piecemeal knowledge. Bad form. Not so he's gone, he's gone way down in our estimation now. Because we were fans of him. With the whole mad sound. Yeah, Sanders the whole stuff. mad sound is crazy stuff. And sure, I even contemplated getting a set of clubs like his. And not only that, you also contemplated getting your compass out. I did I? On, excuse me, on the, to read the greens. I oh mean. yes. <laughs> so that uh, that was Richard McAvoy. Well done to him. Fantastic. Uh, commiserations to Bryson yeah. Shombo for being a twat. And, um, yes. We had the Bridgestone then. We had the Bridgestone. That's right. Uh, JT. Uh, Justin Thomas. What pretty a, emphatic win for what JT. A, what a player when he gets going. He, he he's a very serious kind of guy. He, you know, he obviously likes a bit of a laugh, but yeah. sometimes when when you look at him looking at people. Oh. It's like he would, he would go Cut through you. you. Yeah. So he's got this really intense, I'm going to rip your head off. Oh, yeah, like. good, good, and then he gives a nice sort of normal answer. Yeah. Thinking, and he's funny, he's dry away from I, the place. I wouldn't like to get on the wrong side of that boy. <laughs> anyway, so he uh, he won by four shots. Yes. Yeah, but it was also a, a good week for uh, Torbjorn Orson. He, he finished third. Third, third yeah. Yeah, maybe on, on the radar for the Ryder Cup. Well, there's uh, many, many picks Four picks. Four picks, so why yeah. wouldn't he? He may even do it. He may even get into the... the what's the what, how, what's the time? Because I know that um, America's pretty much got their top eight now. Yeah, that's sort of... What's the time frame for the European team? When's our last final qualifying um, event? It is the made in Denmark, so it's the last week in August, first couple of days in September. Okay, so about it's three, eight. four weeks to go. Yeah. Many more events to land? I think there's only three. Only three more events. Squeaky bum time if you're there, so, yeah, um, Bridgestone, WGC, then Roars tied sixth. So not a bad, not bad finish for right. Roars, but again... Meh. Meh. A bit, a bit meh. Uh, what else has been happening then? USPGA, Morris. Moved on to the USPGA. Was there, a, was there a USPGA? I think that's the final major of the year. Has that happened? It'd be hard to know. I didn't see it on the TV. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Never Nobody did. did. <laughs> Did right, so what's the crack with this bloody PGA? Did you ring Sky and ask? I did. I rang them earlier on, and I'm waiting to hear back from the press office because I want to hear from definitively the from mouth. the horse's mouth. What's the crack? What's your what's your official line as to why yeah. you didn't show the PGA on the on the television? Um, they showed it. They didn't show it last year. If you remember, BBC picked it up late, yes, and showed only a couple of days of it, and then this year. It was sold to, the rights were sold to a guy, to 11 Sports. Which I've never heard of, but apparently your man's some big wig in football. He owns Leeds United. That's the, that's, a, that's kind of big, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's like an online platform he's aiming for, and they've got some of the Serie A and some of the football. The problem was, Morris, that for a lot of people it was a bit difficult to access. Well, just on on that, uh, just before we came on, on the air to record our podcast today, we did a quick online Twitter uh, poll. And the question that we asked our our, our Twitter followers on uh, Twitter at NI Golf Podcast was, and they just uh, tell me the Stream, question. Streaming of the PGA Championship was a a ballocks, b not so much a ballocks, or c no ballocks at all. So we only ran it for a couple of hours because we've basically made it up before we came on. So what was the final uh, result of the poll? Forty votes. Yes. Twenty percent not so much a ballocks. Okay. Eighty percent a ballocks. A resounding bollocks. It was a bollocks. It was a bollocks. And I tried to watch it uh, on various machines, devices, platforms. Yeah, the first the first couple of days were free on Facebook. Yep. But and a, a bit on YouTube. And a bit on YouTube. The range was on YouTube because I saw a bit of that. It kept buffering for me anyway. Yep. And also they were only showing like featured groups. But so Rory was one of the featured groups. So that so the first day, you know, you could almost give it a bye ball for, for an NI Golf podcast <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Uh, but however, it was okay most of the time mm-hmm. for the range, for the range stuff. Yes, okay, right? that was fine. The feature group dropped out quite a few times, exactly. and then the proper coverage, forget it. Hadn't a clue. Yeah, hadn't a clue what to do, where to go, yeah. why it didn't let me uh, go on. I gave it my, my login details. I gave it just no. I just kept freezing and playing the same bloody advert over and over and over again. It was, the plan was originally, I think for most people, when it was announced that 11 Sports had it, they kept saying it was free to her. 
and then of course probably wasn't free there you had to sign up then yes but then you had to sort of unsubscribe yes yeah, so they wanted to basically get your details yeah. hope that you know a lot of people forget the yeah. unsubscribe well obviously morris that's not what they would say no. but that's what you're saying and i would think also that um a lot of people have forgotten to unsubscribe <laughs> but do they get hit with a charge then yes so you you got the seven days free, but as soon as the event was over, you had to... You had within a week, you had to unsubscribe. On a point of principle, I refused. Did you did, did you go through the process? I didn't even try. Point of principle, refused. I wonder how much they were charging you for the non... for the for forgetting. Aye, was it, is it monthly or a year? <laughs> 700 pounds. <laughs> can't, see, can't see it. If you were unfortunate enough to sign up and, uns- and forgot to unsubscribe, please get in touch with the NIGOV podcast. <laughs> At NIGOV podcast please on Twitter. Please send us a tweet, yes. Yeah, just let us know if, if you did and, and had you been hit with it. It's it's probably only a, you would presume it's only a monthly yeah. subscription. So, so I don't know what it what what could be twenty or thirty pound. I don't know something like that. Maybe. Do you think that's the future of coverage, Morris? You're um, into this sort of stuff. You see that, but you see that's the why it was so frustrating because I, I couldn't get my head around it or didn't know what was going on. And I would was, say you're IT savvy. All right, do you yeah. know what I mean? Um, I think yes. <laughs> Yeah, for, that's a, a short answer. And it's a short answer is yes. It may be a few years off, but there's going to be a lot more competition from online channels, for want of a better word. I think there's a lot more technical infrastructure that they need to get in place to make this as seamless as it would be turning on your Sky mm-hmm. and your TV. Um, now that smart TVs are here and you can actually go on the internet on your TV, although most TVs seem to be hugely underpowered when it comes to memory mm-hmm. for surfing the web. Even, you know, even the modern TVs, they're still a bit clunky that way. Okay. And, and using your remote control to try and type in URLs a is a nightmare. major pain in the arse, yeah. right? But if they get that sorted out where it literally is a click of a button and, you know, there up comes a streaming service, it'll be no different from turning on your TV once they get that sorted. Mm-hmm. And... You know, TV companies are under pressure in terms of viewership and uh, and advertising. And, you know, as this is... I don't see... It. That's why I want to hear from Sky what the official line was. Mm-hmm. If if we could find out, you know... They did deliberately not try and buy it. Did they yes. think it was overpriced? Exactly, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Okay. And so it'd be, it'd be interesting, though, because then, yes, there will be other people come into the into the, the, the frame, market into place. the market and say, OK, well, we'll take it, as these guys have done. Yeah. It's just, you know, they were putting up announcements saying we're really sorry with the technical yeah. re- streaming problems and blah, blah, blah. But I can see another. <sighs> there needs to be a significant number of people who are willing to do that before it really benefits anybody. So it, it's probably five to ten years off at least. I can't really see, you know, the, the Open or the Masters or yeah. whatever for quite a while doing yeah. that. I think of them all, the one that could do it because it has the money. And the know how is the masters, is the masters. Yeah. and I wouldn't be surprised if that's the one that goes first. But you can guarantee they won't do it, Morris, till it's right. Mm. So anyway, back to the tournament. Um, it was hugely exciting, from what I hear, because I, I gave up on Sunday. Just did you go old school? Okay, no, I didn't go. Radio. I didn't go back to radio. No, I, I went to radio. You would think with my day do- day job, I would. Yeah, yeah, but no, I was in a bad place on Sunday night because <laughs> I had a a puncture, oh, God. and I, then when I tried to change the tire. My wheel brace snapped off. Oh, you were. So I had to call the, the mobile tire people, and yeah. it was 80 quid later. So I was in a bad place, so I got home. I had loaded gin and went to bed. Good man. Well, honest, honest, honest. I actually missed the excitement, but yeah. the next morning when I got up at 5 o'clock, yeah. bang. Tiger was. Tiger was just like, what? And I've obviously watched it back since. And what a round of golf. Impressive. The lowest. What? 64. 64, lowest round. the lowest round in a major. 23 putts from daft thing. Like that was uh, when I watched the bag, I went, whoa, whoa. Twitter stitched, went stitched, mental. Six inches stitched. Yes. Cheaper. Twitter was mental. There was people going over. CBS Sports was great. Exclamation marks everywhere. And I, I have to remind you this, check to this juncture. Did I not say to you four, five, six months ago, Tiger will come back and he'll be in contention with in two majors in 2018? No. Did I not say that? No. I meant it. I may have said he's no chance and he's gone, but I meant he would be back with a vengeance. I, I honestly can't believe it. That's it, incredible. It, it, it totally defies, you know. All sort of medical science. <laughs> Just shows you what force of will can do. 
and a bit of talent. And a bit of talent. Just so a bit happy. of latent talent. Oh, incredible. An incredible final round. And some of the roars when you catch it on, on video, if you were lucky enough to catch uh-huh. some of the clips, when he holds some of those putts and noise was mental. But even when he stitched some of those uh, yeah. those par three shots, you know, it's just like he still he still moves a needle like nobody else. Remarkable. Remarkable. However, he did win. He didn't Somebody win else won. And unfortunately, neither did the Irish guys, Morris. No, not another great tournament for Harrington and Dunners. They missed the cut. Missed the cut. Uh, sadly, uh, you know, Padraig only missed by one one yeah. shot. That's not one leapt out putt, and that's, that's the difference. Showed you how low the scoring was. It was a soft golf course. The difference between making the weekend and not making the weekend is... Put here. Is, put there. Yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, so Dunners, he was a wee bit further down the field. He was plus six, six I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, Roars and Shane made the cut. Mm-hmm. Uh, very important for Larry at the minute. He's trying to keep his card. Exactly. So he needed to have a good round. He was going great mm-hmm. until uh, we incident at the 16th. Kind of put the wheels off a wee bit. Yeah, a wee bit of a, an, a, an altercation with a rule division. Could have been close to top 10 finish if this per, hadn't happened, perhaps. Although, you know, who knows. But, um, yeah, so I, I again, I didn't say it on Sunday. Um, you went searching for info. Yeah, so he basically looked like he blocked his tee shot off the 16th. Um, he went into kind of like where there was like a grandstandy okay. barrier, port louis kind of enclosure place. He was looking to get a drop. And the seemingly the referees hadn't a, hadn't a ball to him. His quote was, um, I think the referee didn't have the balls to make a decision there. And if he did, I would have had an easier shot. If you put John Paramore or any of the good referees out there, and he would, yeah, he would have given me full relief. But he wasn't giving me full relief. He was telling me to drop it in the tree, basically. I ended up making a good four. If I'd made double, I wouldn't have been too happy with him. No, anyway. <laughs> uh, it is what it is. It took so long. I felt I was getting in Justin's way. He ended up making bogey as well. Uh, Tom, Justin said um, that he didn't. It didn't annoy didn't him. Know. He said if it, it had been him, he would have probably done the same. Mm-hmm. And it didn't really put him off. And he bogeyed it. And you know, he, so he, he, he didn't blame Shane mm-hmm. at all. But the coverage uh, did the coverage. The American commentators. <laughs> You'd have sworn Shane was starting in front of Justin, not landing to hit a shot. Oh, or beating him over the head with a club. <laughs> it was a bit OTT from it was what we can bit. gather. Was it the same in 2017 at the Open Championship when Jordan Spieth took 25 minutes to play a shot when mm. he hit it into the car park? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. No. Um, so, the, the, yeah, the, the, the American, what do you call it? What's CBS, that? wasn't it? Yes. So, you know, the question is, first of all, what do the Christian Brothers School have, have to do with golf? What do they know about <laughs> golf, right? <laughs> They know nothing about it, so they shouldn't be commented. Right? <laughs> However, yes, the American media did go TT. A wee bit. So, Shane at least has given himself a good run, and he's played rightly. The brother on the bag, fingers crossed for Shane. Well, he's, he's, he seems to be much more yeah. positive. He yeah. seems to have got whatever that was out of his system. Out of system. And it's great. You know, you could probably tell that he didn't go as ballistic as he as he might have gone. You know, <laughs> and, and even at the Irish Open, exactly when we saw him, he was still one. not in great iron twist. However, one Irish man who's doing very well, Morris J, is Ricky Elliott. His 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 Brooks Brooks kept his caddy. Yeah, absolutely. Kepka only wins majors. <laughs> That's some achievement, though, isn't it? It's two majors, two this year, like. and the way he did it, because like it's not as if. You know, you think he's just all big hitting, but he's not. He holds putts under pressure. He grinds when he needs to. You know, he's maybe not the prettiest, but he doesn't worry. He just he's a pretty his, boy. He's lovely. He just gets his head down and gets it done. Why are you telling us about it? Why don't we let Brooks tell us about it? Everybody was rooting for Tiger. <laughs> I mean, as they should. Um, you know, he's probably the, he's the greatest player to ever play the game, and uh, to have the comeback that he's having is, is incredible. Um, you know, you look at the British Open uh, when he when he finally got that lead, how energetic that crowd was, and then when he started making that run, it it brought me back to when I was a kid and when I was watching him, and you heard those roars. Being a part of that as a fan is cool, and even when you're playing, it, it's still pretty neat. It kind of pushes you <laughs> to step up your game. I mean, you have to um, because you know he's right there if you fall. Three majors at 28, it's a cool feeling. It really is. <laughs> Uh, you know, hopefully, you know, I, I can stay healthy. Um, I've kind of had some trouble with that over the past two years, three years, whatever it was. Uh, miss the British and, and then the Miss Augusta. I'm much more disciplined now, um, so I should be able to. 
play every major, uh, making sure my body's healthy. I'm excited. I'm excited for the next few years. I mean, as fans, like I'm a fan of golf. They sh- you should be excited. I mean, Tigers come back. Uh, you look at what Dustin's doing, Justin, uh, Rory, Spieth. I mean, it's a great time to be a golf fan. Um, and I, I can't wait to duel it out with them over the next couple of years or next however long. What do you think? One more in him? Who, Tiger? No, Brooks Kapka. <laughs> I think if he keeps going on like this, Brooks Kapka could do a Tiger Woods and win 18. Ah, you're bum. Listen, he is really clued in for majors. Now, okay, you could say maybe he's got lucky, but, you know, he's won three majors now. He doesn't win other tournaments. He just wins majors. So he must have the magic just about right. And mm. once you have that wee trick, I know, okay, people change and, you know, you get injured or things happen away from the game. But he seems to at the minute have the, the magic touch, a bit like Spieth had there for a way. Mm-hmm. Well, here I forgot to say actually about about Shane Lowry. Um, he's going to be playing at Wyndham, so this is he's, he needs to try and get up there just to keep his card. Okay. So he's playing at Wyndham this week, and then he's going to head back to Europe and concentrate on the European Tour to try and get his world ranking. Yes, to try and get the world ranking to get him that yeah. card as well. So fingers uh, crossed. Sir. Fingers crossed. Uh, as you heard, then uh, Kepka was talking all about uh, Tiger. Tiger and Tiger had a fair bit to say as well. I didn't drive good all day. And I was struggling with my golf swing. I had, I was warmed up hitting it left. I was hitting it right with every single club. Even my, my sandwich, I wasn't wasn't doing very good. And so I knew this was going to be a, a struggle to try and piece together a round. And I did. Brooksy, uh, <laughs> uh, what he's doing back there is it's it's tough to beat when a guy hits a 340 down the middle. That's uh, that's tough. And you know what he what he's did at, at uh, Shinnecock, you know just bombing it and then he's doing the same thing here um i played with him in practice round it, it was he was literally hitting it 340 350 in the air and when a guy's doing that and hitting it straight and as good a putter as he is it's um, tough to beat At the beginning of the year uh if you just said yeah I, I would have a chance legit chance to win the last two major championships i with what swing <laughs> uh, i didn't have a swing at the time you know i had no speed um i didn't have a golf swing i didn't have uh you know, my short game wasn't wasn't quite there yet. You know, my putting was okay, but you know, I, God, I hadn't played in two years, and so um, it's been a hell of a process this year. Do you think he's going to win another one ever? Uh, yes, I do, do now. Do I genuinely so do. You're now. jumping on a bandwagon. No, I, just because he has a couple of good rounds. He has. He, he surprised me. I think, given a fair weather. I think he'll get over the line. What about Ryder Cup? Then it's looking uh, pretty likely. For the intimidation factor, if nothing see, else. Tiger the... Woods' right a cup record is poor. Yes. That's the bottom line. Yes. Is he better off in the backroom team or is he better off playing? Because it's difficult to get people to play with Tiger. Or, to lie, it was difficult to get people to play with Tiger. It's Tiger's, now the new improved Tiger's Smiley Tiger. A, a different kettle of fish. Did you see the, the, the shades he was wearing? Did you see him waiting afterwards to congratulate yeah, Brooks Kepler? Tiger thing. Woods would never have done that. Mm-hmm. So never have done that in the past so maybe this different tiger will be an addition a playing addition if he continues to play anything like he's going to play you can't imagine him not being picked no well speaking of Ryder cup the american final eight or the the, the eight yeah, that automatic. have made the team the automatic eight uh, were announced mm-hmm. and uh, mr furick here's what he had to say i'm excited i'm excited as i said we have eight guys that love to compete I also know that the team we're going up against in Europe is very strong. You know, you look at the world rankings from both sides, it's really even in the top 20. The Europeans know this golf course very well. It's a great golf course. They have a lot of experience around it. They'll set the golf course up in a way that they think will favor their team, and uh, they have the home crowd. So when you look at these matches, uh, it's been very lopsided in the last 20 to 30 years to the home side. So I'm very excited about my team and i have a lot of confidence in these eight players but each and every one of them knows the task ahead of us and they know uh they know it's going to be tough and uh, but i couldn't be more excited about the eight i have and i do have confidence in them okay the eight are you ready for, by, a, for by, an by initial the way, test is jim excited he's excited yes he's very excited uh the initial test dj dustin johnson bk paul kelly no. Brex Kapka. Brex Kapka. jt justin thomas pr Patrick Reed. B.W. Bobo Watson. J.S. Jordan Spieth. R.F. Ricky Fowler. And W.S. 
Webb Simpson. Wonder that Webb. surprised me. Wonder well Webb. done to him. Uh, the uh, European team, as it currently stands. Well, you see, this was hot off the press then. It's hot off the press earlier on today. Yeah, yes. go for yesterday. Uh, go. FM, Frank Mitchell. <laughs> FM, FM, I couldn't tell Italiano. You. Oh, Francesco Malnari. Yes. JR. Justin Rose. That's it. Uh, TH. Ed Terrell Hatton. TF. TF. Lovely long flowing hair. Oh, Tommy Fleetwood, obviously. JR. Justin Rose. Yep, see, there's two. <laughs> uh, R. McGuy. Uh, Roy McElroy. AN. Other. <laughs> AN Other. AN Other, plagued with the injury. <laughs> I uh, don't know who. Alex Noren. Alex Noren, God. And surprisingly, perhaps... J- uh, JR was John Ram, obviously, of course, we were talking yes. about her. Um The IP... Ian Poulter. Ian Poulter. Who's played his way in on the back of a few really Isn't strong games. Congratulations. See, when to he gets his head red. Goat up or whatever yeah. it is, he smiles. Uh, a few names on the bubble there. Yes. PC. Paul Casey. Paul Casey. Who took his European card out to deliberately make the Ryder mm-hmm. Cup team, so... You've got to think that if he makes that decision, he's a pick automatically. T.O., who you mentioned earlier on. Uh, T.O. Uh, is Torbjorn Olsen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, R.K., met him at Glasgow Airport. Russell Knox. Russell the, Knox. The, the, the Irish Open winner, Russell Knox. Uh, and R.C.B. Rafa Cambrero Bello. That is correct. So of those four, do you think he would just go bang, bang, bang and pick all four of them? Who knows? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. However, speaking of the Ryder Cup and Rory, yes, did Rory actually hint yesterday or the day before that he might not play in the Ryder Cup? That would surprise me, Morris. I shall give you what he said. I hope I'm going to play in the Ryder Cup. I'm not sure. I need to assess where I'm at. So, he said that. I, did he mean it? Did, was he getting confused? Do you think he meant? Do you think he meant the writer cup that we play in? Do you think he meant? I think I'm going to play a lot, or play some, or play tournaments before. I hope I'm going to play in the writer cup. I'm not sure. That would. That would I need to assess where no, I'm at. In, hey, that's a misspoke. Joke. He went on to say, "I think the best thing for me to do right now is just sort of take a couple of days off, reflect yeah. on what I need to do going forward." The best thing might be to take that first FedEx Cup week off and work on my game and come back, hopefully in a better place for Boston. Historically, the first FedEx playoff hasn't been my best event of the four. I've played well in Boston. I've played pretty well in the other two. So, yeah, we'll see. I'll see how I feel. I'll do some practice this week and see if I feel ready to go there and play. Obviously, five out of six weeks or whatever it is leading up to the Ryder Cup. But, yeah, we'll see. Well, I think he's kind of said at the end of that, I think leading up play, to the Ryder he Cup. He played in the Ryder Cup. It's just how much he plays before it. He was very disappointed at the end of that. He, he hit it all right, but he was disappointed with, this, with the major season he's had. Right, look look at the time. We need to move on. Andrew Morris Golf now offers 12 months interest-free credit on everything bought just, online just and in store. New golf clubs or that electric trolley you've been dreaming of for as little as £30 per month. Drive the extra mile to drive away happy. Check out andrewmorrisgolf.com for full terms and conditions. Andrew Morris Golf on the web and at Laganview Golf Centre Lambeg. Let's finish with a bit of uh, amateur news. Obviously, it's not just the NI Open, which is on this week, a big major golfing event. There's also a couple of big British uh, amateur events, the yep. British Girls Amateur, which uh, starts today. Our glass. Our glass. Playing at our glass right now. And the British Boys Amateur, uh, which is at Port Stewart and RP. Our, our Port Rush, yes. So good luck to all the amateurs taking part, including uh, Tom. Tom's playing uh, in the boys and there's... Three players from Lisburn Golf Club playing the boys this oh, week. Very good. And three players from Athen Wright Golf Club as well. 23 Irish players in total. In the girls, it's a smaller field. I think there's eight or nine Irish girls, including Annabelle Wilson from is, Lurgan. Is Athen Rye like a bit of a field, that golf course, is it? Or? No, I think... <laughs> Oh, yeah, sorry, I had, to, I had to be done. Oh, oh, God. On, in other amateur news, congratulations to Robbie Cannon, who won the Irish Gloves. And finally... Um, the Irish team was named for the Eisenhart Trophy, which is a world championship. Remember, the girls' mm-hmm. team was named, or the ladies' team was named. Three no, three Ulster girls on it, Annabelle, Paula and Olivia. Well, it's Robin Dawson, uh, John Murphy, 
And I think the last one is Connor Purcell from Port Marnock. Well done. Right, we got to go. Because we're, we're, we're way over time, as always. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> great old chat. Yeah, isn't great old chat. Uh, so if you'd like to get in touch, we're on Twitter, at NI Golf Podcast. We're on Facebook, the NI Golf Podcast. Here, just remember, we have to give away Rory's golf bag. That's right courtesy of Golf Now and TaylorMade. We keep forgetting to do this, so I think we should do a wee video and get it sorted and get it up there soon. I think we should. Okay. By the way, is this the one that Roy signed? Yes. Yes. This could be worth a fortune. Uh, right. Totally so we stick got, it in the ABI. Totally, totally stick it in the ABI. We've got to go. Uh, thank you for listening if you've made it this far uh, after all of our chitter. And um, we'll be back hopefully in a couple of weeks' time. Anything on the horizon over the next week or two? No, we'll, we'll obviously look back on the two events up at, at Ardglass and at, at Royal Port Rouse. And the NI Open. The of NI Open as well. And then we'll be looking forward to the end of the season, right? A cup, obviously. Right. Teams will be named. That's it from us. Thank you for listening. We'll see you in two weeks. All right, don't touch me. <laughs> see you. Shaking that ass, shaking that ass, shaking that ass. See woo, shaking that ass, shaking that ass, shaking that ass.